Yo, welcome into the B Ball Jones podcast. The goal of this podcast in my business is to bridge the gap, to fuel hoop dreams, and to impact realities on the court and beyond. So thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoy it. So, Nelson, you know it's March Madness time, man. And everybody feel like they break because everybody's trying to figure out who's going to be the college champion. Is it going to be this team? Is it going to be that team? Is it going to be one for the history books where we get all these upsets? Is it going to be one where we get the young guys coming up and winning through the ranks? But I think we have to have the discussion, man, about uh, as a player, if you if you was on like a, a college – free agency board and you could pick I was in the portal. Yeah, like you, you could pick a portal right before the tournament started. And you could either go with like a a young group. It's just freshmen. All you guys are young. Freshmen maybe a couple sophomores. It's a younger group. Like Kentucky usually has. Would you rather pick them? Or somebody like a Villanova or Gonzaga usually has the older veteran guys. It's usually the juniors, a couple grad transfers, and, you know, uh, seniors and everything like that. So which group would you rather have? Would you rather have the young, big, flashy names like Kentucky or Duke? Or would you rather go with the little low-key, not as popular or as glamorous names like a Villanova or Gonzaga? So if I, the young team we're talking about, we're talking about some young stars, like some young dogs, like yeah, you, some, some young people, towns, like some Anthony Davises, like some some <laughs> lottery pick type players. They they young, they want it done pretty much. That you might you might get a handful of two year guys, but most of them want yeah, it most done. Of all. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. So I have another question. Uh, I mean, I ain't trying to, you know. I know it's hypothetical, but if it, if it's me, am I me or am I also a, like <laughs> a young star? You know, I might go to the league type dude. You know what I mean? Or am I myself? <laughs> okay, that's a good question. I mean, I I think about that. <laughs> Let's say you you fit whichever group you're in. So if you're with the young group, you one of the you one of them ones. You one of the younger guys who okay. have potential lottery pick. Now to say you guaranteed to make it, you know, because Kentucky recently ain't had the success they've had in the draft that they used to have. But you in that discussion as one of them people, or if you with the older guys, you want them dudes who, you know, you're a junior, senior, grad transfer, you know, fifth year and stuff. If that's the case, I'll probably take the uh, older guys. Mainly because when you play with older guys, especially on that level and in a program like the ones you mentioned, like a Gonzaga or a, um Villanova, they know what the goal is. Like they've been here, they didn't you know, they've been grinding it out for a couple of years. They trying to win. As opposed to the young stars in the Kentuckys and the Dukes and all those places that like just you know they are one and done machine like oh we you come here you going to the league type stuff that's what they here for they came here to go to the league now they do want to win I ain't saying nobody wants to lose they still competitive all that good stuff but a team like, full of guys going to the league and they know that and that's what they here for their the winning isn't the number one thing. They're trying to win every game, and if they lose, it's like, oh, well, I'm still going to lead at the end of the day. And I ain't saying nothing wrong with that, mm-hmm. of course. Like, you know, by all means, you know, go make you some money. You know what I'm saying? I'd go to If I was a one-and-done type player, I'd be one-and-done. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to say nobody they, they should. But the thing is, if if I'm really thinking about winning a championship, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to one of those teams that's going to be mm-hmm. it's gonna be full of guys that want to do that. You know, and I'm big on winning, so I'm not a very selfish person. Of course, I want my own personal success, but I, I want to win above everything. That's always been me, so I'm never going. I'm never going to put my personal success over trying to win the ultimate goal, which is a championship on whatever level. So, give me the Villanovas or the Gonzagas. 
I'd be out there running flex offense. I mean, motion offense. I'm good. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to agree with you, man. Because remember, we're talking about Ash trying to win a college championship, and I'm pretty sure you remember my little theory on picking in March Madness. Do not go with the young teams. If they look at the draft boards. If if most of them boys coming from the same school, don't pick them. So if Kentucky got them young guys up there, don't pick Kentucky to win a championship. If Duke got the young guys up there, don't pick Duke to win a championship. If Villanova got a couple guys up there, you know, maybe, maybe. Because they had Mikael Bridges. He was like a lottery pick or like very like, maybe like 16, something like that. Yeah, early first round type stuff. Um, DiVincenzo, Brunson, all those guys who were on that team. Uh, but for the most part, it's the older guys that win championships. It's very rare that you get the freshman coming in winning and the sophomore coming in winning or the high big name guys winning. So if I'm trying to win a championship in college, I'm definitely coaching. I mean, I'm definitely playing under that type of team that has the veteran guys and the more experienced group. Because we haven't been through the war. We already know. So we get down 16 we're not tripping because we know what's up. We've been through the tournament three or four times already. We've been through the situation three or four times already. So a freshman, you coming in, it's your first experience, experience with all this. It's the first time really getting the grasp of what this March Madness stuff feels like. And you don't know emotionally and mentally what it takes to overcome these storms. You think you're ready for that big moment because you didn't play college basketball before, but uh-uh. This tournament, a whole different thing. So I'll take that experience and that, that well-seasoned group and we all went through the storm together to be in our third, fourth time in this versus the young guys. We'll know what we're doing for real. We're just kind of having fun, hoping we get a good swing at it. But we already know what's going on. So give me that Villanova, Gonzaga group. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand that part of it. Like, knowing what it takes. Like, we say it a lot in the NBA. Because, like, in the NBA, you would say they have playoff experience. And that, that goes a long way. People underestimate that. Knowing what it takes to win in these high pressure win or go home situations is big, especially mm-hmm. in college because it is win or go home. Every game is a game seven. There's no four game series. You know, you got to win today or this it. And if you ain't had, never had that kind of pressure on this stage, it's, it, you're going to feel it. Trust me. You will feel it because, man, let me tell you, boy. Let me give you an example of like real time with my own eyes where I saw how big playoff experience was. You know, I, I always talk about Augusta, where you know that was one of our like rivals at CSU. But this is one of the few times I got to give them their flowers. This is when I knew after my last season, I watched them play in the PBC tournament championship, and we didn't got they put us out the round before in the semifinals, so they go to the finals. I'm watching the game. Like, I, part of me wanted both teams to lose. That's how bad I'm, I felt at the time. I didn't want to go for neither team. I was like, I hope it's a, tr- a draw or something. <laughs> but I'm watching the game, and I got to give them their flowers at this point in time. Them and they coach Jill Meachers. This is I, – I ain't never seen nothing like this. They playing Lander in the Peach Bell Championship. Lander jumped out on their head, out the gate, went up like – Went up like like sixteen zero or something crazy like that. They were hooping, baby. They were hooping, jumped out on them so bad. And I think it was like sixteen to zero or something like that. At one point, it was twenty one to two. It was like out of hand. I was like, dog, they finna blow out Augusta. It was in Augusta too, which makes it even crazy. I'm like, are they finna blow out Augusta in Augusta for the championship? I'm like, dog, it was too much for my mind. I was like, no way. They, I ain't never, I would have never expected this because I don't think I've ever seen them lose in Augusta. So in my mind, I'm like, it's already over. <laughs> I'm like, they they finna mm-hmm. lose this. But when they jumped out on them like that, I was shocked. And then they called a timeout, obviously, because you know that's what you do. The team on the run, they call a timeout. They come out the timeout and they still getting on their head. So they up big. They up like twenty in the first half early. Augusta never got rattled. They never started rushing. They never started. You know how, you, like, a lot of times, you, especially with younger teams, you still start rushing, start trying to make home run plays. 
taking threes like out of nowhere off you know pick and rolls and pulling up trying to get all the points back at one time or something like that but in basketball you can't do that there is no way to get 20 points back at once you got to walk them down and that's exactly what they did walk them all the way down was they was up 20 in like the first five six minutes walked them all the way down at halftime the game was tied i said they finna lose i said they finna lose like they if you would have been up that big early, they feeling good. They hype. You know how it is. You want a big run on the other team. Call time out. They in the huddle like, yeah, let's go, let's go. Hype, jumping up and down. Augusta just like, it, hey, the game is the game. <laughs> Basketball is a game of runs. They made theirs. We're going to make ours. You can see that, that they was never phased by it. And they came out and continued to play their game the whole time. They never changed. I mean, they made adjustments for their defense and stuff to stop the other team, but they never changed what they did. It's like, hey, this we're we going to be good. And they walked mm-hmm. down. At halftime, the game was side. At the end of the game, they won by double digits. I was like, and I, and I texted my coach. And I, I some of my guys from CSU, you know, I don't mean no offense by this if y'all here. But I texted my, my coach, Coach Butler, and I said, Coach, we was never going to be champions. And I, and I said, I say that because we could have never done what they just did or what I just saw them do. We could have never done that. The way they jumped out on them, we would have had, like, we would have had guys with their heads down, would have been upset, would have been angry, would have been mad with each other, would have been trying to figure it out. We would have had too many attitudes about it. Like, we would have been down. Them boys never got into it with each other, never started pointing the finger. You're not guarding. You're not playing no defense. Ain't what you're doing. Ain't do this, do that. Never saw none of that. I'm watching the game. I'm watching them just to see because I've never seen them down like this. I'm watching them to see how they're going to react. And they never got like that. They never changed their attitude. And they walked them boys down. At halftime, the game was tied. I said, it's over. When I saw that, they're going to win the game. They're going to win the game because they're good. They just, you just played your best half of basketball ever, and they tied it up before it was over. I'm like, it's over with. <laughs> They're going to win. Like, there's no way around it in my mind at this point. And then they ended up winning the game by double digits. I said, dang, boy. And that's what it's like having a team with playoff experience. Because the year before, Augusta not only won the Peach Bill Championship, they went to the NCAA tournament and went to the NCAA championship game and lost. So it was the NCAA, NCAA tournament runner-up in D2. They didn't seen plenty of playoff games. They won plenty of winner-go-home situations. They good. They know what it's about. They've been here before. And it showed because when it came down to it and rubber had to meet the road, they started rolling. And I was like, we could not have done that. We could not have done that. So, give me that <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> give me that because it's hard to have that, dog. Like, people don't understand. You don't see that every day. And I don't think people understand, especially in a winner go home situation. They could have very easily been like, oh, God, this is it, bro. This is my season for the end. Like, dang, bro. The boys said, hey, we good. We good. Just keep doing what we doing. Like, you know, make some adjustments. And we're gonna be straight. And they were. So props to them, man. That's some stuff I hey, I admired that. I was like, I can't even, I can't hate on that. That's amazing in my mind. I know what it takes to do that. And yeah. boy, they did it. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can really get that understanding of weathering that storm unless you go through it. So you got to. if yeah, like if if you're to lean into that analogy of weathering the storm. So if you're out at sea, you know, you and your crew on a boat, it's easy to sail through calm waters. It's easy. Anybody can do that, bro. You don't even need a whole lot of experience. You can learn on the fly of how to get through a calm water. You know, fish out there, you know, sharks out there. It's just you, your boys in the boat. That's good. It's easy. You can make as many mistakes as you want to without any, like, of course, any dramatic, drastic, you know, you put a big hole through the bottom of the boat, something mm-hmm. crazy like that, or you, your engine go out, something stupid. But an average little situation here and there, you're going the wrong way. Oh, psh, easy. Just go back this way. Oh, we did that wrong. All right, cool. Navigate back this way. 
But when you got a big storm on the way, and you've never been in a storm before, your brain is scattered because you don't know what to do. You don't know what, what direction to go. Do I go, do I just stick in it? Do I just keep going forward? Do I sit here? Do I try to go back? Okay, what if we run out of fuel? If we do this, what if that happens? Oh, we got too much water in here. How do we get it out? So that new fresh group is like, man, what, what is this? What, I need, I'm not prepared for this. What is, I don't know what this moment is. I don't, you, you're emotional all over the place because you can't even think straight right, right now. Versus the seasoned fishermen, the sailor, they're like, oh, another storm. Hey, Johnny, go set that anchor out. Hey, get the buckets ready. Set the net out this way. Let the sails up. Do that, do that. They got a whole game plan because they ain't the first time they've been through this. You know, last time when we tried to push forward, we got a hole. The sail ended up getting torn down because the wind was too strong. Last time we set a sail forward, we had a hole, so make sure that we got buckets ready for that. We thought we, thought we were going to go back, but no, I'll stay here for a minute because we tried to go back and the sea got even worse because when you go closer to the coastline or, or to the uh, coastal region or go back to the dock, it, it's worse for this reason. So they have all this experience to go back on to know in this situation, it's probably how we should handle it. You don't obviously know guaranteed, but you have all this experience to bank back on and say, well, out of these 10 times it's happened, these eight things happen every time, and then these seven things happen, but then these nine things happen. There's a good chance all things can happen again, so let's prepare for it. So in the game, you're emotionally calmer now because you've been down 20 points before. You know what that feels like. But if you're that new group, you thinking, man, we got to hit some threes, man. We got to get some threes because, you know, you do the math right. If we hit five threes, that's 15 points and we back in the game. So next time you know, you got a team coming down chucking up a three. You got another team chucking down a three. Come back again chucking up a three. You went one for three, but they hit all layups on the other side. So you're going down 20 points to be in. Uh, now, it's, what, that's six. And hit a three, so it's 23 points. So you still in that mindset, oh, damn, we did all this work. How did they get a bigger lead on us? So emotionally, you're even more frustrated and more routed and more hurt because less time is on the clock, more effort has been spent, and now you're even down by more. Or the season group is like, all right, cool. The worst thing we do here is get a turnover and don't get a bucket. That's the worst thing we can do. Free throw counts, layup counts, midi counts. Let's get the best shot possible to not go backwards. So their mindset is totally different because you done been through the storm before. So that's why I take that season group because we understand it. We know we had the emotional uh, memory to start back on and say, hey, we done felt this feeling before. We all good. So mentally, it's just staying calm enough to say, all right, cool. Just get a bucket. We need to stop. Get another bucket. Get a stop. Get another bucket. And it's easy to think about it out loud, but to be in the moment and say, stay calm. We're on defense. Just get a stop. Okay, flip the switch now. Okay, we got that stop. Now let's get a bucket. Whatever the best shot is, let's get that one. So the ball movement has to come and play versus the star player trying to take over and do crazy stuff, and it's like, bro, we don't need that. So that mental and emotional balance of weathering that storm is totally different when you've been through a couple of storms here and there versus your first time out there. It's like, oh, snap, what do we do here? You think what you did in, in regular season or what you did even in a uh, conference play was similar. Nah, bro, it's a whole different team from a whole different coast that you ain't never seen before. A play you ain't had no real scouting report on. It's different out there. So me and my boys been out on sea. We've been out on uh, as a good sailor, a seasoned sailor group. Give me that group because we know the emotional and mental fortitude it takes to really come back from whatever position we're in. People don't – and to, to piggyback off your – Boat, boat in the water analogy. People in, ba- in basketball, but also in life, you know, just, just to give y'all some game. When you it, when you going through a storm, it's better to go through the storm and get to the other side than to turn around. Because if you mm-hmm. if you especially if like you know using your analogy, you on a boat, you in the USC, you sailing forward, you see those storm clouds coming at you. You see the you see the storm. You see the lightning, the clouds, rain, everything off in the distance. It's better to sail through that than to turn around, because you're gonna spend more time in the in the storm trying to turn around than you would if you went through it. You can't run from it, and it's the same way in basketball. You got to go through the storm. You can't run from the storm. 
You because if they're running from the storm is trying to get it all back at once, jacking those shots. Oh, we got to get these threes up because we down B. This and that. No, you run it. Go through. Mm-hmm. Keep playing your game and keep doing the same things that got you here. You know. I remember. I did. I I give you a good a good example. I had to teach a freshman this. My guy Dom, love you, Dom. So Dom, a freshman, my last year. We doing this drill called five on four. Most basketball players, at least to up to like high school level, know what I'm talking about. This way you mimic a five on four fast break, and then you know you try to score. If you don't, the other team get to go the other way, whatever. So in the drill, you got your team on defense lined up like in front of like defense lined up in front of the offense, free throw line extended, and the offense is on the baseline. It's like the same way. So we like face to face with your matchup. I'm not, like if I'm on defense, I'm on like free throw line extended. My matchup is on the baseline right in front of me. Coach will roll the ball to somebody on offense. When they get to whoever he rolled the ball to, that man's matchup runs to the baseline and touches the baseline and then turns around to go back on defense. The offense goes on offense. So it's a mimicking a 5 on 4 fast break. That's the point of the drill. And you want to, this to teach you how to, not only how to play 5 on 4 offense, but you want to teach your team how to guard if they're at a disadvantage, like how we want to be matched up, whatever. We doing that drill. Dom on my team, Dom my point guard. We get down like 12. And it's like a five minute signal. So you get down 12, that's a lot of points to come back from. So what ends up happening, we get down big, they roll the ball, and I think they rolled it to me. I give it to Dom because he's the point guard, so he can push. Dom pushing it, and he trying to like dime some stuff to the corner from like half court. Trying to get a pass to the corner for a three, and they stole the ball. I said, Dom, no, no, Dom, chill. He said, my, I said, what, bro, we down. I said, Dom, just stay silent. They're going to give us the game. It's a fast game. Like, if we score, we keep, we stay on offense. I said, it's a fast game, Dom. Just keep this, be silent. We don't need to score all of them one time. We're going to walk them down. They're going to give us the game. Trust me. He said, all right. We come the same thing. We get a stop, we get the ball back. We on offense. We run it, we score. We get it back. We run it, we score. We get it back. The next time we run, they kind of stop us. I said, Don, run some. And he run a play. We score on the play. We we walk them all the way down. We end up scoring on the last five on four to win the game. And I and I came up to him. I said, Don, I told you they gonna give it to us. <laughs> and he said. <laughs> He walked out saying, you did good, but you keep doing what you're doing. Just stay silent. Basketball, that's what it's about. In basketball, but in everything, just stay silent. You know what I mean? Because it's going to get hard. Mm-hmm. It's a game of runs. Just stay silent. We're going to make our run eventually. But you can't try to get it all at one time. You got to make a run. That's why you got to stay silent. There's no 12-point shots. There's no 15-point shots. There's no 20-point shots. We got to walk it down. So that's all it's about, man. But if I let him keep running, we was never going to win that game. But me being the leader, and I feel like I should have been a better leader because my team wasn't able to do what the Augusta could do. You know what I mean? I can't give my team playoff experience, obviously. But, you know, part of I put part of that blame on me because it's like I didn't have, I cannot prepare them for that. But I could prepare him for this moment. This was his learning point. So I was like, just remember this, Don. Just stay silent. You're going to make your run eventually. Just stay silent all the time. So, but I had the experience for that. I've, I've been here before. I was a fifth-year senior, so I've, I've been in these situations. I'd have been down a lot of drills. I'd have been behind in a lot of games. So, but that's it, man. I'm sorry. I, You know, I got to throw me a story in there every night. I ain't got no basketball story to tie to it. Well, not yet. <laughs> I'll say that from later, but – um. Keep coaching. You will. Just a, <laughs> sheesh, I know, but uh no, nah, I, I got one actually. I'm gonna wait to transition to the next part, but um I'll make it more practical for everybody. All right. Yeah. So one time I was driving and I don't remember if I was headed back home from being out of town or I was going to the place out of town, I can't remember. One of the two. But I was driving and it was a pretty bad storm. And um it, it was getting really bad to a point where you know how you're driving and the wind's blowing and your car starts shaking a little bit and then you can't even see what's in front of you for real, for real. It's one of them bad storms. 
And so, you know, everybody got their hazard lights on, lights on and stuff. And it's like people have like common sense with their driving right now. And so I'm driving. I see people on the side of the road. They just like, look, bro, I ain't even driving this storm. Y'all go ahead and do y'all thing. I'm going to wait. And I'm like, man, I, can't, I don't remember if I was going to a session or come back home from a session, one or two. But um, driving, trying to do what I'm trying to do. And I'm just like, all right, let me just slow down. Make sure I'm under control and just get through the storm. Because me sitting here, I have no clue when the storm going to pass, whether it's going to sit here. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to just keep driving. So driving through, driving through, I'm like, damn, it's getting worse the more I drive. It's getting, it's getting crazy. I finally drive and cross like over this little bridge or something. And not too far past that, probably like the next town or something. It's clear as can be. I'm like, bro, you can almost not tell that it was storming. Like that's how different it was. Like as a like, it's like storm right here. Get past, it's still a little wet. You know, you still got a little wetness on the ground because like the storm wasn't just past or whatever. And you go past that. I'm talking about dry. Like, like nothing happened. I'm like, bro, is this what? Is, did I transport to another place or something? Because this is crazy. <laughs> And at some point, I'm thinking, like, man, them cars still sitting in that storm, hoping that it just passed. They're thinking that I'm, I'm this is the best case for me to be in right now because I'm hoping the storm just passed. You can't turn around and go back home because we're on the, uh, the highway where you just one way and that's it. So you guys sit here or keep going for it. That's the only option you have. And so a lot of times, it's the same thing in the game where, well, the game's not over yet. You can't just quit and go home. Forfeit is probably the dumbest thing you can do. So we just sit here and keep getting our brains blown out or we just be patient and try to actually fight back. And so that's like a real life analogy of how the game is to where you're going to be in a storm one way or another. So you either sit here and you're blown out by 20, then it goes to 30, then it goes to 40, then you get a world record for biggest uh, blowout to have in the college tournament possible, whatever <laughs> round you're in. Or you be patient, calm down, and just start making more progress. You start just moving forward through this storm. But now that I went through that experience, went through that moment, I know that, okay, maybe I can drive through some of these storms. I just slow down and, like, gather myself, make sure I'm okay, my car is okay, be aware of my surroundings so we can go forward. But if I never went through that experience, I might have been like the other person on the side of the road and just been chilling. Maybe their experience told them to do that. But now my experience has told me, hey, we can get through this part here. So a season team... It's going through that storm and saying, hey, we been, man, remember when we was uh, in November, we played that big school and we had the issue over it? Yeah, same thing. Remember two years ago when we was in the tournament and we played against that team and that happened? Yeah, same thing. So now you can go through the storm and know that. Let me just calm down. Let's just get a stop. Hey, what's up? Hey, coach, put him in. You know he, he the defender. Put him in right here. Let him guard such and such. Let me switch and get this player. And I'll do this role. He does that role. And it becomes a lot easier when you have that experience to piggyback off of and say, hey, this is how we win the game, right, fellas. So it's easy when you went through that experience and you have those moments to pull back on and say, hey, we can get through this storm, we can get through this pocket. And you're you're more equipped mentally and emotionally because you had the experience to piggyback off of versus that freshman team. It's like, yeah, I don't know, man. You're just hoping for the best and trying to swing for the fences. But that's why I was a player. I think I said the group has a play, man. Hey, hold on. Oh, time out. Time out real quick. We're going to get back to the episode. I know you're enjoying it. I know you're enjoying the show. But I need you to help me real quick. And to make sure that this episode can grow, make sure that this podcast the show can grow overall, and you can keep getting great guests like this, make sure that you subscribe and follow along. So if you watch right now on YouTube, help me out by hitting the subscribe button. Go ahead and do it real quick. If you're listening in your car, chill out for a second. Um, If you're on Apple or on Spotify, just like when you get a moment, hit the follow button but not right now while you're driving if you're working out or something or you're still in your room then go ahead and subscribe with me like help me help you okay but thank you for watching i really appreciate you uh i'm gonna stop interrupting let's get back to the episode thank you that's why you gotta be uh, two only two things can fix that when you got that young team you need a vet like a one veteran captain leader i say vet like we talking about that bit but in, in college we need you need a captain or mm-hmm. you got to have a really good coach. And that's the only two ways. Because you need somebody who's been there. If you got a bunch of guys that ain't never been there before, it's hard. 
But you got like I like I was for Dom. You you got a captain that could, that has been here before that can say, "Hey, we good. Calm down. We good." And I used to, have to do that a lot. Like man, I could, I can tell a couple stories about that. One. But yeah, you either need that or you need a coach who got the respect of his players and they got control of his locker room and can sit your guys down in a timeout and be like, "Hey, this is what we're gonna do." And we gonna we gonna walk them down. We gonna come back, and they believe it. You know that's big. If your coach can say, "Hey man, we good. We gonna do this, this, and this. We gonna walk. We gonna walk them down. Let's get." I remember Coach Moore used to be like, "Uh, let's be tied before the half." And if we got tied before the half, we felt like we was gonna win, or we was down two, whatever. You know what I'm saying? We like, okay, we good, we good, because we accomplished the goal that we had set out. You can't go into. Of course, you go into the game like, okay, we gonna win the game. But as you got to win segments of the game, let's win the first five minutes. Let's win the first media. Let's be up at the half. If you're down, let's be tied at the half. Let's take, let's take the lead before we get to the next media timeout. Or if we're down at halftime, hey, let's win the first five minutes, come out, hit them in the mouth, and, and you know, make a run. When you, when you can win them little goals, that's coaching. You know what I mean? Because as a player, mm-hmm. I mean, of course, as a player, you're thinking, let you win the game. A coach is like, hey, Let's win these next five minutes because these next five minutes are going to be important for the rest of the game. So them are the only two ways you could really stop a young team from being a young. You know what I mean? So let's, let's use that as a segue. Mm-hmm. Now you're now your coaching seat. Would you rather be the John Calipari coaching his young boys? You got a young freshman group? Or you got the season vets? You, you're Jay Wright or uh, – dang. What's gonna say I got a coach name? Um, I got his face right here, but I cannot remember his name. That's crazy. Shout out to Gonzaga's coach. I'm sorry, guy. But uh, let me look. I feel bad. I know his name. Hold on. Ooh, I got a couple follow up questions for this one too. <laughs> Just see how his basketball. Oh, I'm typing coach. His name is Mark Few. All right. 61 years old. Ah, good grief. I knew it, but it just wasn't coming to me. But Mark Few, would you rather be Mark Few, Jay Wright, even though he's not the Illinois coach no more? Would you rather be one of those guys or Coach K, uh, John Calipari, and have that young uh, freshman lineup to coach in the tournament? Uh Uh-huh. It's a difficult question because look, okay, let me let me ask this. Like, you know, I gotta give some uh, follow-ups. Am I one of these legendary coaches like a Jay Wright, like a Mark Few, like a John Califari, am I, or a Coach K, you know what I'm saying? Or am I just a coach? Am I just myself? Because like I said, to to be that coach, you gotta have the respect of your players. And I ain't saying you know, me being not having a legacy or something means I'm not having their respect, but it's different. You know what I mean? Because you know, you you understand. Like I respect all my coaches, obviously, all of them. I ain't never been a disrespectful player, but it's different playing for like a first year coach and Coach K. It's a different mm-hmm. like feel and atmosphere, as you can imagine. So. Am I one of them or am I just myself and I just got this job? You know, I've been coaching for a couple of years or whatever. That's interesting. I think let's let's start off with you are the legendary coach. You you've been seasoned, you've been in the game, you fifty, sixty some years old, you've been coaching for the last however many years. Ooh, I think honestly, I think I take the young boys in that in that uh situation because when you got an older team, let, I'm going to go ahead and assume that both teams are full of good guys and respectful and coachable players. But when yeah. you got an older team, a lot of times it's hard to get them to like not not buy in. They're going to buy in because you, if you you know they've been there for a while, they mean you didn't you know instill whatever you know we're trying to build. But. Older guys often get stuck in their ways, kind of want things to go their way. You know what I mean? Want want to win? Like they're they're trying to get it now, and they're I was like, I'm I'm the captain, or not the captain. I'm the senior. You know, this is my year, this is my time. 
You know what I mean? And that's cool. I ain't saying nothing wrong with that. As a coach, I'm going to understand that. But when you got these young boys, even though they young superstars, they're trying to get to the lead, I can mold them. Especially if I have, you know, that legendary coaching status. Like Kyrie's and Jason Tatum's and Zion Williamson's, they don't go to Coach K like, hey, man, this is my team. They go to Coach K and be like, all right, Coach, what are we going to do? Because I trust you. Mm-hmm. I know you're going to give me what I want to be. Same thing for California. It's like, if I, I know if I play for Cal, I'm going to leave. So they're going to do what he's telling them to do. And I ain't saying, like I said, I'm not saying the older guys won't do what you tell them to do, but they're going to have more of an ego about it. But as a, a young guy going to come in like, all right, what do we, what do we got to do? You tell me what we got to do. You know what I mean? And then I can mm-hmm. go from there. So, and then if they're young and talented, like you're saying, and they are listening, they're coachable, I can turn that into something. Now, obviously, you know, they ain't going to have the experience as the older guys, but that's why I say, hey, I call that timeout and we sit down and I can say, hey, we good. Just keep doing what we're doing. We're going to do this. I ain't on defense. Let's go here. Let's do this, whatever. And then, you know, we're going to walk them down. And if they buy, if they trust me and they bought into what I'll be telling them, They'll listen and they'll feel confident that they can make that just, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, and the older guys would too, just because they've been here before. But like I said, I can mold young guys to still kind of have a mentality to weather the storm. And that'll be something I can instill in them and they'll be willing to listen. They'll know what's going on. So, yeah, I think I'll take the young guys at that point. I think it'll be the opposite, though. I think you would have the young, because I think, bro, this, this ain't just some young freshmen coming in. This is like superstar caliber guys who've been getting their butts kissed for the past few years. So not, I don't even say this in a bad way, but they have a little ego about them of that. I hear what you're saying, coach. But I can go off right here and we can come back because of me. Now imagine you have two, three, four of those guys on one team. That's a different challenge you got to deal with. Versus if you've been with these guys, if you're a season coach and you got a season team with you, you know who's who and what's what. So everybody kind of knows their role at that point. They know I'm the superstar coming in, forget what coach talk about. Versus a young guy, he's like, yeah, you Coach K. Yeah, you John. But I'm Kyrie. You feel me? I get busy out here. That's how I play basketball. That's how I win. But Coach K, like, that's cute, bro. That's, that's middle school stuff. And big boy level, we, we do stuff different over here. That, that ain't how you win basketball games. Well, let me excuse me. That ain't how you win championships. That's how you can win a couple games here and there. That's how you win high school stuff. But at this level, when you play zone, you know, your scouting report, that ain't going to fly up here. You nice. Don't get me wrong. Zion, you are athletic freak. We put the zone on you. What's happening now? RJ, you a bucket, bro. I respect you. K Cunningham, you get busy, my guy. But no. We are going to play the system this way. So I think sometimes you have the ego more for the young guys because they don't know. Now, and I'm not saying disrespectfully, but they just don't know or understand it is what it takes at this level. So not everybody's going to be as coachable in a disrespectful sense because they just don't know. All, right, all I know is I do this, I get this output. If I go out here and go crazy, if I dominate the game, we get this output. But at this level, that recipe don't work up here. So when you're a vet, you already been through this three or four years in a row, your ego's a little bit different because you know, yeah, I've been working over in the summer to try to do this to my game, but I know what Mark Few said. I know what Jay Rice been saying. So I think that it's different when you talk about the ego stuff when it comes to that. Um, but if I had to pick one a coach, I think I still might go with the veteran group, man. If I'm a veteran coach, I think I still want to go with that veteran group. But part of me does have that ego of like, can I win with the young guys? Like, can I repeat that Fab Five uh, magic that Michigan had or do it, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, Anthony Davis did with that group? Can I win with a whole bunch of freshmen? Like, part of me wants that challenge. So, I don't know, man. I think I still would go with the veteran group, man. So, the thing I was saying about what you, what you responded with, you're going to have that challenge on every level in college basketball of guys mm-hmm. coming in thinking they the man. Because, and I don't care what level of basketball you win, from junior college all the way up to high major D1, 
if you get a college scholarship, nine times out of ten, you were the best player wherever you're from. Like, of course, you know, you got the outliers like the IMG Academies, the Oak Hills, the Montverde, the Chino Hills. Of course, they pumping out high major D1 talent. You know what I mean? So it's different. But besides those, because obviously those are rare, if you went to no name high school then you know, whatever part of Arkansas, and you get you get a couple of D two offers, some JUCO offers. You're the best player where you're from, most part, most often, most like nine times out of ten, you're the best player in that city or in that county, in that area, whatever. So you think you're good. You think you're the man. Obviously, you know you you understand as a basketball player or as an athlete. Like, okay, I ain't got no D one offer. So obviously, there's people out there better than me. But mm. At the same time, you're still the best player where you're from, and you think you're the man. Very, very rarely do guys get do guys from regular small town high schools or whatever. Very rarely do more than one guy get a scholarship on the same team. I don't think people realize that. Every year, you might get one senior that got that scholarship from a regular high school. So. What ends up happening is, and I can tell you from experience because I played at junior college basketball. I'm at a junior college. Obviously, we're not the best of the best around here. We all in junior college. We all in JUCO. Ain't none of us playing for Alabama or Duke or Kentucky. So, obviously, we're not the best of the best, but we're the best where we came from. All of us. <laughs> we're the best from where we came from. So, we come in here. I say we, but I mean, I didn't really have that attitude about it, but most of us come in here thinking we're going to be we're going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to get the ball. Obviously, you know, it's going to be better players, but I'm still going to get the ball like I was in high school because that's what they recruited me for. I was scoring in high school, so of course they brought me here to score, right? That's what they recruited me for. Yes, to an extent, but we also have scores here, and they were also scoring in high school. They were also the best school. So you're going to have that everywhere. So even if you got that older team, it's going to be the same thing. Okay, it's my, I'm a senior now. It's my time. The last seniors was hooping. And, you know, you probably going to get to hoop too. But at the same time, it's like, okay, do you have the wherewithal to understand that a younger guy might be better? It's hard to explain to a senior that somebody younger is better. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard to get a senior to come off the bench for a junior or a sophomore or a freshman. It don't matter who they are. I could bring Kyrie Irving in. He could be top 100, top 10 in his class. If I got a senior point guard, he expected to start. He don't care who we recruit. Hard to get that guy to buy in. But as opposed to me having seven freshmen, all of them ESPN top 100, they going to know each other. They going to understand, oh, man, we got talent here. We finna win. And if they respect me as a coach like I expect them to, they're going to understand I got tough decisions to make. Y'all finna compete every day for these spots. All of y'all, ESPN, top 100, five stars, four stars, whatever. I don't care about none of that. Y'all going to compete every day for these spots because they were five star positions and only about eight or nine of y'all going to play every game. And I'm going to have 15 guys. So y'all fight it out. I ain't saying fight literally, but, <laughs> but y'all compete to see who's going to get these spots. And then, like I said before, also, I, you you need to have a captain, an older leader who's been here for a while, senior guy, that can also help you lead. You need a player that can level with players. You can't just be coaching 12 freshmen. It's dang near impossible, if you ask me. you got to have some kind of senior mm -hmm. leadership, somebody that players can go to for advice and questions that they don't necessarily want to ask their coach. So you need that, too. So, I'm, you know, I was I plan to have that part of it down, too. But I would rather take the young guys who understand everybody in here is good as opposed to the older guys that think it's my time. I'm a senior. I got to get the ball, at, like, whatever. And I ain't say every senior's not like that, but I just don't want to deal with that. It's hard to teach an old mm -hmm. dog new tricks. You ever heard that phrase? <laughs> so, yeah. 
give me the young guys who I can mold into a team. Because if you won't play, I mean, if I got seven guys, five stars, you know, five of y'all gonna start, the other two gonna come off the bench. Y'all gonna play. But don't don't be that they'll understand everybody in here good. So don't be butt hurt if you ain't literally in the start five. Especially if you can still gain 20 minutes and the other guy gain 20 minutes. Now I know you want to play 35, but just be patient because you hooping for me at a Duke or a Kentucky playing 23, 24 minutes and doing what you do could still get you to the lead. They're still going to understand that you're good. Now you can always come back and try, you know, these other freshmen will be gone and you got a year of experience. You might up your draft stop, but you can still go to the lead. So you're good. Don't think I'm, I'm selling you short of what you could be. So give me the freshman guys. <clears throat> I don't know, man. I, th- I think I, I think it goes back to the emotional state that we were talking about before. And I have a story to back this up, too. So uh, coaching these six great guys, man, nice group. But we're not the most talented team in this league that we're in. And most recent game, but we came out. What I'm talking about, we finally started playing our real basketball. This is probably the best game we started out with hands down. To my boy, I had one guy, he hit a good three, four threes in the first half. Another guy hit about two threes. I'm talking about boys come out. Boy, I'm talking about pistols loaded. Come out. Bow, 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 bow. I'm talking about, I'm going, they going crazy. I'm like, oh, where this been at all year, bro? Like, all right, cool. We, we cooking this game. But um, before the first quarter, uh, something happened, but some we got a tie up or something. Ball went out of bounds, something like that. I don't know, but I called a timeout, uh, trying to save my boys out because it was gonna be a turnover. Call a timeout, boom. So, um, may have just play on the fly. All right, so I had my point guard that was going crazy, uh, a guard up here on the wing, a guard in the corner, ball side, and my other big, uh, weak side, and my other big taking the ball out. So. Had my guards to the screen for the point guards going crazy. He come across, uh, so he catch it going to his strong side because most righties do better, like, turning to the right. And so had him coming, boom. I knew because this sixth grade, bro, the defense would be that crazy. They ain't finna switch. They don't know the game like that. So, boom, screen for him, coming off, going to your right. If you catch in the right spot, it's catch and shoot. If you don't, you can dribble into it. But probably one of my other best shooters on the team sitting in the ball side corner. So if he does step up, boom, kick it right there to him. I drew the play up just like that. So they remember, emotionally going crazy, hype and stuff. So play happened, boom, he caught it. He looked for the shot, he didn't have it. Next pass was there. Oh, let's go, let's go. They hype going crazy. We got it's two sixth grade teams on the uh us. So the other team sitting there watching, they're going crazy. Oh, they're jumping and stuff on the uh right in front of the score table. I'm like, hey, hey, calm down. Calm down. Hey, it's the first quarter. Game ain't over yet. Calm down. We still got three more quarters to play. So one thing I see in it, I look at them in the eyes and they calm down. It's a good game, right? So I give them that balance of like <laughs> that, hey, calm down. We're playing amazing. I love it. But let's stay calm. We got three more calls to play. We got a whole other game to finish through. So I had to get them to say, hey, I'm at a 10 of excitement. Let's bring it down to about a good seven. Let's bring it down some. We ain't got to be at a 10 right now because y'all finna start going crazy thinking we're going to win this game by shooting threes the whole time. Like, no, 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 no. Calm it back down. Let's play solid basketball the rest of this game. Keep the confidence. Keep the mindset high. Keep the feeling of knowing that the basketball is going to go through this rim up there. But all the other stuff got to go. We don't need you out here trying to be superhero and taking over the game and playing bad basketball now. But because it's such a young team, they don't have the ebbs and flows of understanding what to do. So I had to step in and be like, hey, hey, hey relax. That's just one quarter, baby. We ain't, we ain't win the game yet. So without that experience going from the, from the bench, from the guys out there, I had to be that experience. But if I had a better team or, or a more seasoned team, conversation a little bit different. I'm probably clapping up, yeah, let's go. Good job, you know. That's what we expected, right? All right, build a point about doing this. 
But because they're such a young team, they don't know what to do. Adam bring them back down. Say, hey, beautiful. I love it. But let's stay calm. All right. So that's why I think the experience comes in because if you don't understand that that's one quarter, we ain't win the game yet. You think, oh, if we ain't win the game by shooting threes the whole time, we just, we, we hot, we rolling. Like, no, bro, that's not, that's not how game goes. It's very rare that one team or one player go crazy an entire game. Let's calm it down, play solid basketball. So that's why I feel like as a coach, man, I'd rather have that season team because, yeah, it's fun to have that excitement and stuff, man, but like Augusta knows, like, hey, bro, that's cute. Y'all up 20, fine. 21 or two, it's cool. We're going to walk you down by halftime. We're going to win this game. So if you if you are a young team, you don't have that emotional stability to say we can weather the storm yet. So that's what my my personal relationship with is of like, man, young teams just don't get it yet. So I'd much rather go with that season team that knows it a little bit better and win the championship that way versus the young guys who have some good skill about them. Good, they have some good heart about it, but it's like you don't fully – you ain't been through the storm is to get it. So that's why I say I take that. Uh, if I'm a veteran coach, I'm taking that veteran team. Yeah, I understand on both sides, for sure. I just, I think the molding of a younger team would kind of, no, would probably be more fun, honestly. Oh, yeah. like, the younger team, we full of talent. I'm like, hey, man, as long as I do my job, we might win some games. <laughs> But then, you know, you got an older team, you got to really get them. They're going to, if they've been with me the whole time, they're going to be bought in. So that's one good thing about it. If I didn't have these guys since they was freshmen and now they're seniors, they'll understand what it's about. So that's, I would, I can understand that for sure. But I think I still take the young boys in that situation. If me, if with me having a good reputation as a coach already, and then young players coming in, they want to play for me. They know what I'm about. They know what it's about here. I, I would rather have that job. That's all I'm saying. But I understand both sides. But you got to think. You think you're molding as far as years. You have a year. So think about it. If, you, if you're if you Coach Cal, you got one year to get these guys because they want it done. Versus Jay Wright, you know you got these guys for a handful of years. Or you've had these guys for three years now. So you either John Calipari and you you get that one year with these boys because 90% of them are going to be gone. Or you're a Jay Wright, and you this is your third or fourth year with these guys. So you're going to have to have 20, 30-some games to get that cohesion and stuff straight, the, the molding process to try to win a championship now versus we have had 100-some games to mold, get cohesion, and get y'all the stuff through to now win this one next season. So that's the difference. I think you're thinking about it like, oh, I can play my college career. Like, no, bro, you have one year, one season with this group. Give me that veteran squad. It's like, hey, we're going to go out here and have fun. We know what to do. We know our roles. Like, one or two get out of line, all right, cool. But for the most part, everybody should understand their roles now because we've been through this thing two, three seasons already. But in all honesty, state of college basketball nowadays, yeah, your players, even if they ain't want it done, and they about transfer. So, which is another conversation in itself. But, you know. I can, I feel like I, I'm good to get guys to buy in. One thing I, I've noticed about myself, as a, as far as a leader, I'm good to get guys to buy into what we're doing because I'm bought in. And that, and then what I think also helps as a player at least, I'm not an offensive minded guy, so I'm not the guy to be like, "Hey man, pass me the ball, give me the ball, whatever." They know that, so for me to say something, they know I'm trying to win. It ain't about selfishness, <laughs> and it's hard to you know. Guys that want the ball, I ain't saying nothing wrong with a guy being a scorer, obviously. But when a guy is a scorer, there's always that part. When he says something about what we need to do, unless he just specifically talking about defense, there's always that part of, oh, he just want the ball. He just want to score. There's always that little feeling. But when you got a guy like me, and it's like I average 11 points a game, it's like, hey, dog, I'm trying to win this game. <laughs> You know, so I'm good at getting guys to understand, like, hey, bro, it's about winning. I don't care about nothing else. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I feel like if I was to become a coach, that would be my biggest thing. Like, hey, uh, I know y'all 18, 19, but we about winning. I don't care what you want to do after this. I do care. No, I'm gonna go, I love, I, hey, I want you to go be NBA, whatever. But we're trying to win basketball games. 
winning going to equate mm-hmm. to you getting to where you want to be as long as you're doing your job. So we y'all just, you know, need y'all to buy in and we're going to win these games and we all going to get what we want. And I'm going to do everything I can to help you. And I'm good at getting guys to buy into those kind of things. So I think that's probably why I, I would take the young guys too, because it's like, if I can get them to buy in, we're going to win. They some five stars, some four stars. It might take a couple games and some growing pains, obviously. But by the time that tournament rolled around, because you know, as, as a basketball team, you want to get rolling right around now. <laughs> like you want to be rolling around the January, Februarys, and then March come around, we ready to, to knock some people off. So mm-hmm. that's what you want. That you want to get hot right around that time. So, um. I think I'm good for that. I mean, I ain't been no coach, you know, but <laughs> I think I'm good for that if I was to have the experience and then, you know, learn from my mistakes and some years in. I think I'm good for that. So. I don't know, man. Cause for me, being in the coaching seat and visually seeing the difference between players who aren't at, like, you can play, but there's like that basketball feeling experience and that aggression that you have. I know I'm thinking about at a youth scale, but I can like transition forward to being at a college level. So like you see players and they can play a little bit. They got skill, they got potential, but then you see other guys who their ceiling looks a lot higher because they're more ready right now. But the biggest difference is they either play more or play longer. That's the only difference between at that stage. And so you can see the biggest difference between a guy who has higher level skill, a higher level IQ, more of that basketball, not body, but that just like aggression you need to play. Case in point, you see a shot goes up. Your automatic response is, okay, either A, find a body and box out, or B, I'm going to grab this ball and I'm taking it like it's mine. Versus the younger guy, they're like, they looking at the ball, they seeing somebody else go grab it, and they want to hurry up and get the ball. But the next stage is like, okay, I'm actually going to get the ball now and I grab it. But then somebody else comes and grab it and it snatches it away. That third stage is where you're at now, where it's mob ball. I'm grabbing it. You can come in over if you want to. You're catching the ball. Like, them sorry. So, to see each three of those stages play out in front of my eyes, I'm like, man, this young, naive team don't get these little small things yet. So, imagine that happen in five different areas, mentally and emotionally. Because when you were not down 20 before, imagine it's your first time being down 20 points and you're in a tournament. Imagine it's your first time being without a key player and you're in a tournament. Like, these are moments that you can't – it's hard for you to coach. Because even as a coach, you don't fully know how to do this with it, with this team because it's your first time. So imagine you got Kyrie Irving all the way up through the tournament. He's out the first round now because of some injury he had. Or you've coached around this team with Anthony Davis. He's your anchor on defense. But now your whole anchor's gone. That's a whole big adjustment versus – this is my third, fourth year with Anthony Davis. And I had two other big games or seasons or moments this year where he was out, you know, what to do with it now. You already know that, okay, we can go small ball now, rotate this way, instead of playing this defense, we play that defense. So the team emotionally knows what to do now because we done been without AD for however many games before. John Morant done missed how many games for the Grizzlies and the Grizzlies still rolling? Great coaching, but the players are emotionally and mentally ready now because – all right, cool. When it's the first time we had our dog out. So when you're coaching in a situation, it's certain things you don't have to coach as much. It's certain details you can skip over because they have that experience in their book already. They have a certain level of mental, emotional, and physical durability about them to say, hey, we've been through this pocket. It's just another pocket we're in again. We've been through the storm. We didn't draw through it already. So that's where I come in. Like The experience of seeing with my own two eyes of like, these young guys don't just don't get it. Like, you can't just stand here hoping the ball falls in here. Like, no, bro, go get it. And so we transition that to the college level. It's like, oh, you can't just hope this winning point just goes away. I can't just wheel my way up here. You have to, like, play team ball. Like, it's a lot easier to swing, swing, shot, than to try to dribble through a whole zone and try to finesse my way through that. That's working in high school because, bro, these dudes ain't finna do nothing after this level, man. These dudes finna go home and play Fortnite all night. Like, it's. A job. Well, you trying to go to the league. So, of course, it's easy for you to get buggers on them, bro. Like, these dudes, you, you Kyrie, you 6'3", 6'2", and they big is 6'3", 6'2". 
Like, come on now. Like, this this ain't the same level we're talking about here. Versus you trying to do that now in college, they big 6'8", 6'9", 6'10". Oh, it's a little different out here. So, I know travel ball and everything, you know, preparing for that. I ain't trying to say that. But it's different experience to go out against that night in, night out. So, that little adjustments that you see in the coaching position changes with the young team versus the older team. So, that's why I say it's like, man, give me that veteran team. And that's the biggest difference I see. So as a coach, give me that veteran team because there's certain stuff you don't have to explain and go through. We're we're adjusting on the fly to what this is specific storm is versus, okay, guys, we're in a storm or the airplane's about to crash. It's our first time going through it. So, okay, air mask, this, seat belt, that, that, that. But this is your third. I mean, this is very morbid. But like this is your third plane crash. Oh, psh, seat belt, mask, boom. All right, so we're finna crash in the water now, so let's do this way. We're finna crash in the mountains, so let's go that way. We're finna crash in the city, like, okay, boom. Different type of crash, but we're still crashing. So that's very, like, I'm sorry that kind of, like, wrong people move, but that's an analogy I came up with. <laughs> but say, oh, we finna crash. That's super fast. <laughs> we good. Excuse me, I'm mad. We good. <laughs> I've been next to that person, like, what? <laughs> Oh, we crashing? Bet. Boom. What's up? Why y'all panicking? Like, why we panicking? <laughs> y'all must ain't been here before. <laughs> oh, y'all. Your first plane crash? Is <sighs> your first plane crash? Ah, sorry, but it's my third. Yo, third? Are you a jinx, bro? Like, what is going on? You about to not <laughs> run. You don't need to ride no more planes. Don't you ever get on a plane with me again. <laughs> Oh, oh man, that's funny. That's funny. But I think I think my answer would change though if I was a young coach. So my first year or two, give me that season group. But then once I get a little bit under my belt, let me have some fun with some young guys and like we go together. Because now you know you got. Because think about it, in that situation, you you can probably get your team to wheel you through, so they have more experience at that level of what it takes and what to do. So if you, perfect example is Coach K's gone now. You taking his veteran group, and you got to pick up where he left off. You already got some seasoned guys like, hey, this dude basketball is what we about. Now, of course, you know, but it's different when you switch seats, and now you're the coach, you're the guy driving the uh the boat or you're, you're whatever, whatever analogy you want to use. So, give me my my first year or two maybe with that veteran group, but then we have fun with that young group, and we we just have fun and bump our heads together. So, all right, cool. You got you guys kind of uh held me up. The wind beneath my wings helped me guide through this turbulent season we had. Been third year, man. Let me get with these young guys, man. It's my third year, fourth year as a coach. Let me get these young guys. We just bump our heads together and just run through walls we probably shouldn't have and just have fun with this and try to figure out how we can win. Because I do, I do like the challenge of having the young guys and get them together. But let me get a little bit of that season experience under my belt that first year. Thinking we can win, go deep running the tournament. Second year, same thing. All right, y'all gone. All right, let me get these young guys and we'll figure out something to do. So I do like the challenge of having the young guys, but I think let me get a little bit more see a season experience team first and then go have fun with the young group. And, you know, I played Juco. So at Juco, you only got freshmen and sophomores. You know, and, mm-hmm. and when you were at Juco, we make a sophomore seem like a senior because you were a senior to us. You know what I mean? In this system, you a senior because you've been you, but you only got two years. In reality, you go to a four year school, you're a sophomore, you still a sophomore. Like, it's not a big deal that you're a sophomore. <laughs> we don't consider you a leader or an older guy. But when you're in junior college, it's like, you're a sophomore, you're a leader for these guys. You've been here before. I'm like, no, I didn't play college basketball one year. <laughs> this is my second time. <laughs> but, you know, so it, it, I've been in a situation where you got to get young guys together. People don't think about it that way, you know what I mean? And, you know, Lord rest his soul, Coach Seuss was good at that. He used to get, you know, he was good at getting these young men to buy in and get together. But he also had guys like me and my point guard, Vaughn. Me and Vaughn was good cop, bad cop on our team. And so him having us, I think, made the load a little bit easier for him. You know what I mean? And I was happy to be that role. 
It went always fun, but I I used it a long mm-hmm. time. I was like, I if, if in reality, and I hate to put it this way, but it's true. I was the teen's mama, and Vaughn was the teen's daddy, and Coach Suits was their grandfather. Because <laughs> they all listen to Coach, but they all love him. He ain't really, I mean, of course he coached us, but he ain't going to yell at you, punish you too much for real, for real. Because he love you too much. He your granddaddy. He ain't trying, you know, grand, grand, grandma, granddaddy ain't going to never hurt their grandbabies. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how he was. He still was a coach. I ain't trying to say he was easy on us or soft in that. But when it came down to, like, we got to get right, he was telling Vaughn to go talk to guys because guys had respect for Vaughn. They didn't want to fight him, really. That's really what it was. They didn't want to fight Vaughn. So he was that guy. But then there was me, even though I'm, it's crazy because Vaughn was the smallest guy on the team, and I was probably, like, the second or third biggest dude, but they knew I wasn't going to hurt nobody. I'm not a fighter. I'm not going to hurt you. But they knew I knew what I was talking about. I had the experience and the leadership qualities. So they listened to me for the most part. But at, at the end of the day, if a guy really got too far, like, gone, I I, I was going to get Vaughn. I was like, Vaughn, talk to your boy. Because he don't want this. And, and I'm, I'm going to talk to you. Vaughn going to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> You didn't want that day out that talk, you know what I mean? So that's why Vaughn was the daddy of the group. Cause they they knew they really wanted to, have to deal with Vaughn like that, you know what I mean? And I ain't saying nobody was scared of him, but they ain't want to deal with it, you know what I mean? I was that guy that yeah. was like, hey, bro, we good. I need, hey, for, but for now, you got to do this. You can't do these things. You can't do that. You can't do this. And if they ever had small problems or even sure some big problems, they was going to call me. Because they, they didn't want to call coach and tell coach what they did or what was going on. They'll call me and be like, hey, man, what do we do? Would this happen, that happen? How I get here, how I do this, who I need to talk to? And they'll call me. That's why I say I was their mom. Because I'm like, you know, you ask your mom everything. <laughs> mom, what's for dinner? Mom, what time we doing this? Mom, when we going here? You know what I mean? You ain't never asked your daddy for real. Unless it was something that he did or he was doing. You was going to ask your mom for everything. And that was me. And I had to figure them things out for them. So when you got those guys that can really still lead on your team, you can take young guys somewhere. You know what I mean? You can take young guys and roll with them. As long as you got some guys, the one or two guys that can lead and give you, basically help you out. Player coaches. If you got some guys that can do that for you, the young guys going to do so. They going to roll a little bit. You know what I mean? Because now it ain't just you babysitting. It's you babysitting, but now they got an older brother <laughs> that can babysit sometimes, too. <laughs> it's like having that child that's about five, six years older than the rest of them. It's like, okay, watch your brother mm-hmm. while I'm gone. Now, you might not yeah. want to do it, but you got to, because that's your brother. <laughs> so, that's what it's like, though, for real. Honestly. Alright, so, okay, another time out. Okay, look, if you got to this point, you have to be enjoying the episode. Like, you have to. At this point in the episode, you're enjoying it. So help me help you. Just if if you're on Apple right now and you're on, and you're on your phone, okay, just take your phone, press the subscribe button. It's right there. Just do that with me. Even if on your laptop, take your mouse, boom, click over, boom, do your thing. Now you subscribe. Now you linked in because you don't want to miss the next great episode that I have. But doing stuff like this helps the episode grow, makes the show grow, and the podcast grow so I can keep getting great guests and keep doing great interviews. So if you listen on Apple, or Spotify, take a second, look at your phone, press the follow button, okay? And share with a friend or two because you'll find a value in this. You want to have this conversation with your friends so they can have the same value. Now the whole basketball community can grow, all right? Thanks for listening so far. I'm going to get out your way. Let's get back to the episode. Appreciate you. Yeah, I think Juco is, is like a different world in itself too because that's – a whole different experience from the regular four year. Cause like you said, your second year, you top dog on campus. And you go to a four year, you still a little dog. Like, hey, bro, don't come up here talking crazy to me. I don't care who you are. This is your second year, bro. I've been here four or five years. Like, chill out. So <laughs> that's a funny, different experience, man. But I don't know, man. I think I still take that vet. I think the veteran team is just, it's just, you have different headaches. I don't want to say less headaches. You got different headaches you got to deal with. So. 
it's just certain stuff that you don't have to preach 30 times over, certain stuff you don't have to worry about. So when you got that seasoned team and that veteran team, you don't have to emotionally coach them sometimes because, like, it's like Pop. You know, Coach Pop is like, bro, Timmy, you got him? All right. Hey, man, I'm thinking about having uh, some red wine night. You know, um, I think I might try that vino, you know, whatever. Him and the coaches are chilling. Yeah, good. Hey, Timmy, you done? All right. Hey, um, when he subs in, do this and that, that, and the third, and then we get back out there, let's uh, do that. Y'all good? All right, let's go back out there and finish the game. Or like that old Warriors team, when they, them boys was getting smoked by 30 in the second quarter, they're like, oh, uh, let's get it down by 18, by the half. We'll be good by third. Third quarter, get here. How you getting blown out by 20 in the first five minutes of the, of the, of the first of the second half now? Like, the Warriors third quarter man. need to be studied. Like, the Warriors third quarter is like up there with like Spurs passing and Detroit Pistons defense is one of them like legendary things. That Warriors third quarter and they prime was unmatched. It didn't matter what the lead was. We get to the third, the Warriors finna get the roll. We it's like it was already gone. Like we know mm-hmm. after this half. Just go on, get ready. <laughs> oh, you up twenty? Cool. Need to, do, <laughs> need to do a documentary on that on just them three just or four the, years, however long it was. Just that 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 team right there. Not the whole the franchise. Quarter. Not the whole. Just the third quarter. What happened between the end of the second quarter, halftime, <laughs> and before the fourth quarter, like the end of the third quarter? What happened between there? What was going on? Like what was the first? I want to what was the first game like for them? Like that first game when it happened, and they were just like, they just walk it down, boom. And second game, and then third game, like at some point you do they do have a level of arrogance of like, all right, we're down X amount, cool. <laughs> Clay, splash, splash, splash. Iggy, do his thing on defense. Lob, Draymond do his thing. Sean Livingston killing with the middies. And then Steph come in like, oh, y'all got the team warmed up. Let me come in and start annihilating with the flamethrower. 30-point blowout. Like, yeah, we was just up 30. How we do? That's a 60-point swing, bro. How, how is that possible in five minutes? How in the world is that possible? Like, they need to say that for real, like, the whole documentary. Man, I don't know when it started, but I remember that series they had in 2018. 2019, the year the Raptors won the championship, 2019. They played mm-hmm. the Trailblazers in the playoffs, and Kevin Durant was hurt. And I remember everybody was like, oh, it's Dame and CJ versus Steffi Clay. So they got a chance to win. And the Trailblazers was up every third quarter. Every half. They was, I'm talking about up di- double digits. They was up, because like, I remember they put the graphic up. They ain't specifically say the third quarter, but if you watch the game, you knew. They was like, Trailblazers lead every game. And they was up like 16 one game, but like 19 in another game, or like 15 one other game. Every third quarter, them boys were like, all right, y'all ready to hoop? Y'all ready to play now? All right, let's do it. Mm-hmm. And they got the splashing on them. They went on, they go on that run, tie the game up, Trailblazers call timeout. And now you done went from being up 16, 18 to, all right, we tied. Let's do it. Let's play basketball. <laughs> yep. That was up every game. Double digits up every game. Hey, you know, basketball is a game of runs, obviously, you know. But for an NBA team to be up every single game by double digits in a playoff series and get swept, they got swept be up in the second half. In the second half, up double digits every game. And I know it's a mm-hmm. long game. But boy, I tell you, that was impressive. I was like, no, nah, it, it, it can't nobody beat these boys. Kevin Durant ain't even playing. <laughs> Kevin mm-hmm. Durant is not even playing. And they just walking down these, like, oh, well, it's third quarter. It's just like they look at their watch. Third quarter? All right, here we go. <laughs> did they just get the whole thing? They, they need to study that, dog. I'll yeah. tell you. I don't know what they did. They in the halftime drinking MJ secret stuff or whatever for Space Jam. But God almighty. It was special. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for them to do. They probably gonna do it after Steph retiring them. So it's probably like in the good. 
I don't know, man, because Steph's still looking at you. I don't know when Steph's going to retire, but you got, got a couple years on the job. I was thinking the same thing. But we said the same thing about LeBron like five years ago. Oh, LeBron got about a good four more years in him. Man, still hooping out his mind right now, man. So I ain't gonna lie. After I, I he went Steph, to the Lakers, I'm sorry, I ain't trying to change the subject. But after he went to the Lakers, and then they had their first series, I mean, their first year, and they ain't make playoffs or whatever, I was like, yeah, bro, I got about three, four more years. <laughs> when they ain't made the playoffs, I ain't never oh, yeah. seen LeBron not make the playoffs. You know, he they 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 would talk about that the whole year. Like, LeBron ain't never not made the playoffs since, like, his rookie season. When they got mm-hmm. they ain't made the playoffs, I was like, yeah, you got about three, four more years. And so then AD came, and then they won the championship. I was like, okay. He probably got, you know, I'm, I'm still thinking three, four. And then the next year, he was still hooping, 2021, 2022. He was still hooping. I was like, right, mm-hmm. I, I don't know when LeBron retire. He going to retire when he feel like retiring. <laughs> he going to retire whenever yeah. he get ready. So, I can't speak on him no more. <laughs> I think LeBron, he's such a weird case. Like, I'm not trying to make the whole last part is about LeBron, but he he's in his last case for real for right now. Because I think he really just holding off for Bronny. Like, I think he's really just holding it down. Like, he wants to win another ring for L.A. Not for L.A., but for himself, really. But in L.A. Because Bronny's there. Stay around his boy. Conveniency. He's a family man. So, all right, cool. But then another part of him is like, I want to keep my flexibility and power to say, and this is so weird because this is the first time where it's so much out of LeBron's hands that he just can't control. Because he can't control how well Bron- Bronny brawls out or doesn't ball out. Where he gets drafted, if he doesn't get drafted, because he can go two more years, he don't come out until he's a sophomore. Because right now, I don't think he's pro He missed half the season, so he ain't even coming in just going crazy like that to say he's a freaking pick at all, let alone first-round pick. So there might be another year LeBron being in L.A., trying to figure stuff out so on, i think it's really lebron situation if it, if it wasn't for brian i think lebron might have retired by now i think so yeah. at that ring in la now i think think though okay after that year in la if let's say neither his boys had an opportunity to really go pro like for real for real or there was just a, a bigger gap in age lebron probably would have went out on top that ring in la he might have retired after that because he's all about storyline so i think he might have retired after that I think he just he's still so good. I don't think he would do I think he'll play until he really, really can't get like twenty a night type stuff. Like he gonna be have to I think he'll really have to like not be good. And he probably still gonna be decent, but I think he really gonna have to like not even be LeBron no more. He just out there and just hooping. He a regular player. I think when he a regular player, that's when he gonna hang it up. Cause right now he's still LeBron. Like he's still top ten in the league. Which is crazy. So mm-hmm. I think once he get out of that atmosphere of like, okay, he's still one of the best players, he gonna hang it up. Cause he ain't gonna keep playing if he a regular guy. I think that's just outside of his like he he ain't gonna be able to do that. Like if he top yeah. twenty five in the league, he gonna hang it up. <laughs> he gotta still be LeBron. And I think that's just his mentality. Of course he's still gonna play with Bronny in that way. He, you know, he he good enough right now and he know if he take care of his body and everything, he can make it to Brian. Possibly to Bryce. Possibly. I don't know. But he can make Ooh, it. That's tough. Yeah, that's tough. But he can make it to Brian. If Brian was one and done, he for sure would be ready. Because he, it'd just be next yeah. year. Now, I ain't no telling if he will be or not, but he he's still good enough, and he knows that. But I think if he was a, a pedestrian player, like, he just like, I ain't even gonna say top 25 in the league. If he was, like, third best player on his team, he a role player now. He on his Vince Carter stuff. He gonna hang it up. He ain't gonna. He not gonna play if he ain't mm-hmm. run. And that's how. I, that's how I think he feels. Like he know he can still go out there and get you third. Now the day he can, mm-hmm. y'all gonna get that speech. <laughs> so that's how I think. I'm. A, I'm. A, I don't want. I want you to answer this. I do not want you to answer this. <laughs> but. I, when LeBron retires, does he pull another Miami situation, a whole press conference and say, hey, I'm hanging it up? Does he do an Instagram post? Does he do it like last game? Like, how does he do Because LeBron is a, he's a theatrical player. He likes the dramatics. He likes to play like the fireworks. 
So when LeBron hangs it up and he says he's done, does he do a whole Instagram, YouTube video around it? Does he call another press conference in a speech to do like, hey, I've done what I can do, da 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 da. I'm chasing ghosts and all the other stuff. I'm hanging it up. Like, how does he redo that? So I'm gonna leave that in you guys' hands to uh, finish off this podcast with. But more importantly, I want you guys to add on to this conversation we had about if you hooping, trying to get a ship in March Madness, you want to be with the young guys. You want the young guys, Kentucky's and Duke trying to win the championship, or you want the veteran season guys with Gonzaga, Villanova. And if you're a coach, how would you rather play that too, man? So, uh, any last words you want to say before we get up out of here? Oh, no, man. Um, y'all let me know if y'all think me and B would be good coaches. I don't know what I want. I mean, <laughs> I want to know if y'all think I'd be a good coach. I gotta, y'all might not know how, how good a mind I got for basketball from hearing me speak, but I feel like I could take a group of guys and win some games. <laughs> so y'all let me know if y'all think we could coach real basketball. If I get a head coach a job, I might just put B on my staff to train my guys. You know, <laughs> like B is y'all got to call. He gonna have a key to the gym. Y'all call him. Don't call me. <laughs> That's gonna be Brian's role. But not for y'all. Let me know if y'all think we'd be good coaches. I'm interested to hear that part too. If I have coached you, I don't want to hear your comments. I don't hear no no crazy talk because I will block you. Mm. <laughs> doing anything crazy like that but uh <laughs> <laughs> but now nah, that's it man this is a good episode but uh drop in the comments let us know man do y'all see him being a good head coach do you see me being a terrible coach would you want to coach what team would you want to hoop with what happened with the warriors third quarter does lebron hang it up in five years does he get the Bronny and bryce and even crazy does he get to his daughter where it's the first uh, father daughter duo NBA WNBA. You wanna know what a man gonna retire. So you never know. But uh <laughs> basketball. Still dunking on dude like bro, how is this legal? How is this legal, bro? We gotta we got eat your test for real now. If you fifty five dunking, something wrong, but that man's a mystery. Shout out to LeBron. Um but yeah, uh make sure you subscribe. Because you got a lot more conversations, a lot more interviews, a lot more talks going on. You can't miss them. So, YouTube people, I know you're at home watching. So, go ahead and press subscribe. You're on your laptop or you're on your TV watching right now. Press subscribe. Now, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, you're, you're probably driving. But you might be working out. So, you got your hands free if you're working out, doing walking or something. Go ahead and press subscribe or follow. But if, you, if you're driving, just chill out. Um, like, wait till you get to a stop or wait till you're done driving and then follow and do all the other good stuff. But if you're not, then go ahead and subscribe and follow. You feel me? It's easy. But then if you want to also do like extra stuff, you can follow him on social media. He's available on all that good stuff. It's, his links are below. That's Facebook, Instagram, uh, X, TikTok. Yeah, I think that's it. And then follow me on social media. I'm on, on most of that stuff too. Um, B Ball Jones. That's B E Ball Jones. And that's it. If you able to subscribe and follow, it's the most important thing. Okay, do that because you're listening, you're watching. We're at the end of the episode, so I know you watched this. Okay, so do that. You feel me? But that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. See you next week.